Hello, friends. Welcome back. My name's Ramon. How are you today? In a galaxy far, far away, many moons ago, I made a video talking about the role and importance and purpose of alcohol in skincare. And you can go watch the video. I'm not about to delete it, but it's ugly. It's an old video with the old backdrop. I didn't like the setting of it. So I just want to redo it again, especially in the fact that I am now in my cosmetic sciences program. And granted, my perspective has not changed at all. If anything, my opinion and point of view is further reinforced from being in my program and actually being able to understand a lot more of the behind the scenes reason of alcohol and formulation, but I just wanted to redo the video a little bit more cute, a little bit more formalized. Before we get into it, I'm gonna ask that you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And down below, what other problematic ingredients are in skincare that you hear people demonize all the time, but that you think or know have a very specific function? in formulations. Sound off in the comments, please. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an esthetician, but I am a cosmetic formulation student in my cosmetic sciences program. And everything I'm talking about, everything I'm gonna say is from the perspective of science, especially in the perspective of not only how things work on the chemical level, but also on the biological cellular level. Looking back at the first video, what actually inspired me wanting to create that video is Skincare by Hiram, a creator whose content I watch all the time and I've watched for a very long time and whose opinion and perspective I really do respect. I love things that he's done for the skincare world. But he was talking about one of my Holy Grail sunscreens, the Biore Aqua Witch Watery Essence, which features denatured alcohol high up on the formulations list. And he's like, I really like this sunscreen, but I'm really resistant to recommending it just because it does have alcohol high up on the ingredients list. And that can be really, really drying. And I was like, slow your roll down, let's downshift, let's back up a little bit. Just because understanding the role of alcohol in skincare from a formulation perspective, I was like, there's a lot of things wrong with that statement. I think that you really need to be coming from a very full perspective and not just a very one point of view when talking about things in formulation. And I know right now, a lot of creators have come out with content talking about how you really can't just look at an inky list and know 100% how things are gonna work, how things function in a formulation and how skincare ingredient formulation is a lot more complex than it seems. And they're all 100% correct. James Welsh and Susan Young and Leah, you have come out with amazing videos on it. Go check it out. My own's coming very, very soon. This just goes in line with that whole concept of you can't look at an ingredients list, see a specific ingredient, especially high up in the ingredients list, and assume you know how it's gonna work and what its purpose is and how that ingredient is going to make the entire formulation be without understanding the role of that ingredient in formulation. Alcohol is a prime example of that. So I'll say it once and I'll say it many more times. Alcohol has a purpose in skincare. It serves a purpose as a specific role and function. People aren't putting alcohol in your formulations just to mess up your skin and mess up your life. So that's not how it works. People don't want their products to be received negatively or have negative impacts on people because that just reflects negatively on a company and people don't want that. I'm gonna start off by saying there are two types of alcohol that are used really frequently in skincare. You have simple alcohol, AKA low molecular weight alcohol, AKA generally ethanol. And these are alcohols that have their OH group and they have a very, very short, simple carbon chain. Generally just a few little carbons in there and that's what gives them a lot of their volatility and the characteristics of being simple alcohols. On the other end, you have fatty alcohols, and these still have their OH group, but they have a much longer chain of carbon atoms. And so that allows them to be a little bit more emollient. You'll see those in their fatty alcohols, and those are like sterile alcohol, acetyl alcohol, cetyl alcohol. While they both have the OH groups, their characteristics are very different, and therefore they form different functions in your skincare. So let's start off with the simple alcohol. So the most prevalent simple alcohol you find in formulations is ethanol, AKA ethyl alcohol. But oftentimes you'll see it labeled as denatured alcohol, SD alcohol, or alcohol denat. And these are all variations of that ethanol. Ethanol is the alcohol that's in your liquor. It's, it's your drinking alcohol, but here's the tea. When it's in your skincare, a lot of companies will denature it by adding something to it so that it's undrinkable. You don't wanna drink it because you don't wanna drink your skincare. And that's what SD alcohol is. Ethanol and SD alcohol are basically the same things. And that's the primary simple alcohol you find in your formulations. Alcohol in itself, yes, it's dry. Yes, it's astringent, especially when used at like 100% concentrations in things, but that's not how it's used in skincare. Ethanol generally has four main functions in cosmetic formulations. It can be a solvent for non-water soluble things. It can be a preservative or preservative enhancer, depending on the concentration and what else is paired with the formulation. It can be a penetration enhancer, allowing other things in the formulation to be able to penetrate the lipid barrier of the skin a lot more effectively to be able to deliver their functions and benefits to the skin a lot easier. And it can also be a texture enhancer alcohols because they are more volatile, are able to dissipate and evaporate from the skin really, really easily, allowing things to set down a lot faster and easier and making things a little bit more elegant. And a prime example of that is the Biore sunscreen. First and foremost, as a solvent, again, a lot of things aren't necessarily soluble in water. Sunscreen filters are a good example, but another option is actually salicylic acid. And a lot of salicylic acid slash acne treatments actually feature alcohol just because salicylic acid is lipid soluble. It won't dissolve in water. And if you don't want to put it in an oil or silicone base, 
Alcohol is another option. Not only that, but because you want the salicylic acid to penetrate the skin a lot more effectively, the alcohol allows it to, again, penetrate the lipid barrier a lot more effectively to deliver the benefits that it needs to do into the pore. But back to Bior. So again, you have a lot of new age chemical filters in that that aren't water soluble. Alcohol is gonna be that girl, gonna help to solve them so that the sunscreen filters are distributed a lot more homogeneously through the sunscreen vehicle. Secondly, preservative slash preservative enhancer. Depending on the percentage of alcohol in your formulation, Oftentimes in itself, it can act as a preservative. It's antibacterial, it's antimicrobial, it prevents microbial growth in your cosmetic products. But oftentimes you have other preservative systems in your products which can function at a lot lower percentages and therefore they do a lot more of the work in preventing, again, microbial growth in your products. But alcohol just comes in to just give a little support. And that's one thing that I found really interesting in my formulation classes is that it's not just the preservatives that do the preserving work in products. While they do hold the main brunt of the work, a lot of different ingredients offer secondary benefits to help aid and fortify the preservative system in your products. So alcohol does that as well. As alcohol, it does what it needs to do with killing bacteria and whatnot. And as a result of that, it helps to give the preservatives that are in your formulation just a little helping hand. Third thing, penetration enhancer. Oftentimes, because again, alcohol does have the possibility to be drying, you will oftentimes see alcohol paired with a lot of other things in the formulation. With the Biore sunscreen, you have, again, the UV filters. But you also have, as I mentioned, things like salicylic acid, which are not water soluble. You have things like humectants, antioxidants, skin anti-inflammatory agents that are also in formulations. Alcohol is something that helps those to just penetrate a little bit more effectively into the skin. When you see alcohol in a formulation, often consider what else is in that formulation with it. Oftentimes those things are going to counteract, if not be aided in their benefits in the skin because the alcohol is there just to help them do the work a little bit easier. In the Biore sunscreen, for example, that sunscreen is chock full of skin nourishing humectant ingredients and the alcohol is just helping them do their work a little bit better. And so the texture of it is really, really nice. It's moisturizing, it's plush. And because the alcohol is there, it helps those humectants to do their jobs a lot better and more effectively in the skin. And lastly, texture enhancer. Looking at that Biore sunscreen, the reason that it's one of my top holy grow sunscreens is because it sets quickly, sits lightweight on the skin, and it's very elegant for oily skin types. That's due in large part to the alcohol. Because it evaporates so quickly from the skin, everything in that sunscreen is able to massage into your skin, set down really quickly, and sit down very nice and lightweight on the skin, so you're left with a nice glowy finish and no white cast within a matter of minutes. Another place you might find alcohols is in cleansers, and that's just because alcohol is really good at breaking down oils, lipids, and waxes. So again, when you're looking at denatured alcohol in a formulation, often consider what else is in that formulation just because it's oftentimes counteracting any negative impacts you might get from the alcohol, but the alcohol might be helping those things do their work a lot more effectively. Also, the function of alcohol in formulations is very complex. If the product is saying that it's good for your skin and gives you specific benefits, it's doing so and the alcohol is nothing to worry about. Now let's talk about fatty alcohols. And those fatty alcohols were actually something that are a very new discovery to me. I only really learned about them this last year. They are not the kind of alcohol you're thinking about. While you do have the OH group that do make them an alcohol, the main difference between low molecular weight alcohol and fatty alcohols is the longer carbon chain that the fatty alcohols have that give them that emollient tendency. As a result of that, these are often lipid or waxy based substances that in your skincare formulations offer a lot of emolliency and skin moisturizing benefits to them just because of that long carbon chain. So because of that waxy emollient characteristic of them, they're actually very much the opposite of low molecular weight alcohols. They help to soften and smooth the look of the skin to give it a nice smoothed out appearance. It really helps to aid in skin moisturizing and barrier function. And overall, it just serves a really skin nourishing component in your formulations. And oftentimes these are actually derived from plant-based sources like coconut or palm kernel oil. So point of the whole video, what I'm really trying to get across with this is just that don't look at a formulation, see a specific ingredient and count out the entire formulation because that one ingredient tends to have a negative effect. First and foremost, really consider what that concentration of that ingredient is in a formulation. With pretty much anything, if you put 100% concentration of that on the skin, you'll have a negative impact and realize nothing is really in a skincare formulation at 100% most of the time. When it's something like alcohol, it has a lot of different roles and functions in a formulation and you really have to understand based off what is in that formulation, what the different variables of the formulation are, like it's pH, as well as what is oftentimes paired with in a formulation, how it's going to work in that specific product and therefore on your skin. As I mentioned, low molecular weight alcohol at 100% on the skin can be very drying because alcohols can break down lipids, waxes, and oils on the skin and thus compromise your skin barrier. But at the lower concentrations that it is in formulation as well as what else is paired with in a formulation, Oftentimes, it's a texture enhancer, can help to boost the preservation of a product, help to give you really nice elegant texture, and act as a solvent for non-water soluble things in a formulation. So 
overall very complex ingredient. Not only that, you also have fatty alcohols, which are nothing like simple lower molecular weight alcohols because they are emollient and they help to nourish and really moisturize the skin. Also, fun fact, one of the most popular humectants that we use in our skincare is an alcohol, formerly known as glycerol. I'm talking about glycerin, which oftentimes is found in really hydrating, moisture-rich serums and moisturizers because it's really great for your skin. Fun fact. So with that, that is the tea on alcohol in your skincare and why it shouldn't be something that you're afraid of unless, and I'll put this as an asterisk slash little note here, unless you have really, really compromised skin or skin that is really hypersensitive, which is very realistic and very possible. And in which case I completely understand. I just don't want you to demonize an entire product or formulation just because you see one specific ingredient. And that being said, you can also use a lot of alcohol in your routine and you find that can be very sensitizing to your skin. Just realize maybe you need to cut it out with specific products. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and down below again, what are your thoughts on alcohol and skincare? What are your thoughts on everything I just said? Or more importantly, what are some other skincare ingredients that you think are highly demonized for no real reason? Sound off down below. Thank you guys for watching.